Hi guys, my name is Crystal and welcome to my YouTube channel. How is everybody this Monday morning? I know Monday mornings are a drag, but um, I've managed to get myself up. Um, I took Max for a walk um, across the field um, just now, early, well, early for me. Um, I wasn't woken up excruciatingly early this morning, so I was allowed to have, you know, what's normal for a, a normal sleeping evening. So six or seven hours, so normally I go up, get up and down during the night to go to the loo, etc, etc. But I did manage to have a decent night's sleep last night. I wasn't woken up excruciatingly early. Um, I get up, I make myself a coffee, I feed my two elderly cats, I feed my lovely dog, get dressed, sometimes I have a shower, sometimes I don't. Um, it was, it's got really cold in the evening but I feel hot most of the time so I'm just lying on a bed with a, with a sheet over me because I just get hot sweats. I'm a woman approaching the menopause and I'm just getting hot sweats all the time. I just feel hot 24-7. When I went to the hospital, I was extremely hot um, and I couldn't get cool. Um, it's quite frightening. Hot flushes are very frightening because whatever you do, what you splash water over yourself, you spray yourself with spray, it, you just cannot cool down. It is like walking around with a radiator attached to you on full blast and you cannot do anything to turn this radiator off that's the only way I can describe it and it goes from your head right your bottom of your feet right to your head and it can last from a few minutes to 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 a few hours on and off and at night the bed sheet is soaking wet where I've been sweating and I don't like it, but it's something the woman's got to go through. Not all women suffer it, but I am. Hot flushes, hot sweats, and I can't cool down. Um, also, I'm getting more panic attacks than usual as well. And I don't want to go out. I have to force myself to go outside. Literally force myself. Because all these feelings come over me, like, oh, oh. No, you can't go outside today. You can't. And I went, I can. So I'm battling my inner demons. You can't go outside. Yes, you can. And you are. And I forced myself to. So also, I'm trying to maintain a clean flat, which is difficult for me because I'm an untidy person. I've learnt it from my parents. My parents were very untidy. They weren't very hygienic. Not when I was a little girl, they weren't. We never had any carpet. We never had things to look after. Everything was broken. Everything was second hand. My mum was always ill, so she couldn't clean. So I've learnt this behaviour, and I'm trying to make myself unlearn it because I've got no therapy and nobody's helping me. Despite trying to get help, I'm still stuck here by myself trying to help myself unravel the mess in my head that I've learnt. So now I tell myself one cup, one cup of coffee, wash the cup up. Because what I've been doing is getting about five cups, not washing the one up, drinking another one and, and that. So I'm every time I have a cup of coffee, wash the cup up. Wash it up. Any rubbish straight in the bin right and don't you know so, it's a, so if you're given something put it away don't leave it on the floor etc etc so i've learnt bad behavior and children do learn bad behavior that from when you are suffering domestic violence and a son watches a dad hit his mother he will learn that behaviour. He will think it's okay to hit and talk to his mum like dirt because his dad does it. 
Likewise, if a mum swears and is abusive, then, you know, the children will learn that behaviour from their mother. So, if boys and girls react differently to a parent being abusive to the other parent, so each child will react differently. Some will think it's okay to hit the parent, some will withdraw into themselves and hide, and I, I, you know, girls. Be, some girls become, you know, they they dress too old for their age. They become provocative if they're experiencing sexual abuse, as well as watching their parent being abused. Because that's what happened to me. I was I used to, I was watching my mum get punched by my dad and my dad was sexually abusing me. So this is why I think that I became involved in this internet crap that I got involved in and meeting men off of the internet because I I was taught to please my father, anything to please my dad, be quiet. You know, and when I was a young girl, I was put in my father's bed because noise made my dad angry. So my dad took the bed out of his bedroom, put it in the kitchen, and I remember being put in my father's bed just so that he um, stopped ranting and raving about the noise. So, I don't know how long I've been abused, I can't remember. I think some of it's been so horrific, it's, I've blocked it out of my head. But, um, it's not a matter of being cross with the other parent, if the other parent did something to stop the abuse. If the other parent didn't and watched and let it go on, then I think that a victim has got every right to be cross with the other parent. Um, and two parents can be involved. What if you've got two parents abusing you, the mother and the father, or if it's a same-sex couple? What if both of them are abusing you? How do you get out of that? You see, it's not that I, I get cross, he said, I don't understand why I wasn't helped and why certain people stood and watched. It's not that I'm angry and I don't believe in dishing out my own punishment. You know, I think, I, I don't believe in that. I believe you should forgive and forget. But what if you can't? What if the abuse is so bad it haunts and suffocates you every day of your life because you can't forget it? It's so horrific and horrible, it's with you every day, it affects your relationships, it affects going to work, it affects every day of your life, it's so, been so horrific, okay, so you've got to understand that somebody is not angry, they're upset that the other parent doesn't realise what happens? They're oblivious to it. They're either mentally ill, there's something wrong with them, and they're just oblivious to, oblivious to it, carrying on like nothing happened. When the victim remembers everything, I'm afraid. So in Cloud Cuckoo Land, the other parent, like, oh, you know, not accepting the fact. If, if somebody apologised to me and they said, I'm sorry for what happened, and they admitted that that did happen, then I could understand and maybe forgive. But when somebody keeps carrying on like nothing has happened, then I can't. And I won't. Now I'm going to get on with the rest of my day. It's a Monday, and we'll see what happens. See you later.